evidence to show you some uh, results and some work we've just done in the past week. Uh, these will, the full details will be going up on our site later today, and I don't think the are being made to be here. What I'm saying is, don't worry about scribbling up any numbers down. Uh, it, it will all be available to you either directly or via our site. And Chris mentioned um, some past research that's been done, and, and as you will know probably better than I, there's a pretty consistent story over my adult lifetime, especially over the last sort of 10 or 20 years, and it strikes me that the fundamental position is this, that you, the armed forces, are in almost exactly the opposite position of the Church of England. So explain what I mean. Um, <clears throat> a great many people in Britain um, believe in a deity, but there's quite a lot of rumbling about the main national institution connected with this. The, the, the cause is more popular than the institution. And with your world, I think it's the other way around. The institutions of the armed forces are actually very popular, but quite often some of the things they do, as, as, as Chris mentioned, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, look around Libya, uh, there have been times when the public has not been at all happy. And the issue, therefore, the practical issue for you, is to ensure that where you undertake controversial actions, because that is what the political process rightly requires, which doesn't over time, as will taint the institutional grounds. What I want to look at is some of the uh, aspects um, that have cropped up in the last um, two or three years and just look at where the public stands. Now, let's see if this works. There we go. We asked them whether people trusted different institutions to treat prisoners in their care properly. Uh, British soldiers in Afghanistan, almost three to one, there is comments. A quarter of the public don't trust uh, British soldiers, but uh, normally on a pretty controversial subject, the Afghanistan war, as you know, is not popular. I think these are pretty good figures, but let's put it into context, because we asked the same question of three others. You're up there, not precisely, but not far off, prison guards um, and police officers in the prisoners and police cells. But look at the figure at the bottom, American soldiers in Afghanistan, which is perhaps the most exact read across. There, uh, uh, certainly in terms of British public perceptions, um, your treatment of prisoners in Afghanistan is much more widely, much more widely uh, respected than that of American soldiers. But as it were, Beware, because one of the things those figures tell us is that just as in politics or just as in business, it's much more, much easier and quicker to lose a strong reputation than to build or repair a weak reputation. So uh, it wouldn't take an awful lot to go wrong to give you a headache which will last some years in terms of repairing a reputation. I think that's the practical lesson from there. Again, one of the issues that crops up from time to time, uh, most notably during uh, uh, strikes of firefighters, is whether it is a proper job for the armed forces to intervene. I suppose proper in two sentences. One is, is it a job of armed forces to deal with domestic civil issues at all, uh, when they should be off in Northern Ireland or further afield? And secondly, uh, the, the, the narrow issue of, as it were, taking sides, I put it in inverted commas, uh, that by um, um, getting out the green goddesses and going to uh, fight fires, are you tilting that battle in favour of the government? Well, again, for controversial issues, this is pretty overwhelming that um, the role of the armed forces is supported. And let me say, here, as in um, all of data here, with one exception, which I'll come on to in a bit. The figures don't vary greatly by politics or demographics. So Labour voters, the gap is closer, but it's roughly two to one instead of more than three to one. It's not as if, as are all Conservatives and all Liberal Democrats think it's right for the armed forces to intervene and all Labour voters don't. Thankfully, the differences between supporters of different parties is there, but it is not uh, overwhelming. In other words, this is not 
to a huge extent, a left-right issue in terms of um, the, the British public, and nor is it an issue in terms of gender or age or region or social class. The, the figures are broadly uniform on this, as on most things in this survey, across two groups. Regional regiments. Um, here, um, I don't know if it is of a particular concern to the Minister, but it's clearly a, a, a topic of some discussion. The public is delighted. Slightly more, say, efficiency matters more than local um, identity and local relationships. Um, this, I, I wouldn't worry too much about this, providing that when the process of merging or disbanding regiments takes place, one can demonstrate that the outcome is efficient and that relationships with local communities by some other means are preserved. In other words, uh, I should treat this as a, as a conditional verdict of the public um, that depending on how it's done and the sensitivity and the care, uh, it's, a, it's a, a contest that can, can be won. But this is the one area where there is one very specific deviation from, from the trend which I think um, does deserve attention which is that in Scotland, by two to one, people put maintaining regional identity above efficiency. And of course, with the referendum in Scotland coming up next year, um, this is possibly an issue that will play into that. Now, I'm not saying it would be wholly obviously proper for the armed forces to play any role in terms of taking sides in the referendum, but plainly, if you've got an intense debate in Scotland on the country's future, and the Scottish people feel significantly different from English, or for that matter, Welsh people, on this issue of regional regiments, then you need to take extra care in what you do about the Scottish regiments. Um, Chris mentioned the issue of Muslims and the armed forces. We asked more widely how important is it for the armed forces to to reflect British society. Well, 23 percent say it really is important and you need active recruitment policies to reflect society. 44 percent say it's, it's sensible, but it's one objective amongst others. Take those two together, two thirds of the public think, they should, think that it is either sensible or vital. Um, only 11 percent say it's unnecessary. Shouldn't bother with this, let the chips fall where they lie, they let the recruits come from where they will. And 9% is actually wrong, and there's the other extreme, one that whether there's any appetite to say actually one should be uh, looking to, uh, general, uh, to recruit you know, white people from Britain's uh, British families have been here for, for generations. So, broadly speaking, you've got 67% that take a, a positive, uh, the armed forces should take a positive stance on these issues against 20% broadly who don't. Then we look at particular groups, and do we know there are too few or too many in frontline roles? Black and Asian men, 25% too few, 4% too many. So within those first two columns, it clearly goes one way. But actually, the neither figure is that huge. So there's an issue here to a degree, but I wouldn't overstate it. Women, um, broadly similar things in the first two columns, rather more sex of life proportion, the third say don't matter. And let me go, go through the other three, um, where um, there's, there's no overwhelming or even significant minority sense that uh, it's wrong. And I, I don't think, uh, uh, and I'm sure it was no surprise to you, that the issue of gay men in the certain armed forces clearly is not a, an issue in Britain of the kind that has been presented in the United States. Um, and nor is there any great feeling that the, that the army is you know, too working class or whatever, or too middle class. Um, so I think there is, a, there is some issue here. And I think the takeaway I would suggest is that I don't think it is necessary, for example, to say uh, we need either 4% or 8% Muslims in the armed forces in 5 or 10 years, otherwise we have failed. I don't think as where a mechanistic target of that nature is, is required, at least in terms of public um, perception. 
And what is needed is a continued demonstration <coughs> and assertion that you are conscious that there is something that needs to be done and you are addressing it and moving in the right direction. I think the belief that you are heading the right way is far more important than setting or achieving a mechanistic target. But I do think you need to show that things are being done to move in the right way. Those are the, uh, uh, the findings and uh, perhaps in discussion we can pick up any points that anybody wishes to raise. Thank you. Thank you.